I did it, my friends. I completed the 75 hard challenge. This is something I never thought I would be able to do or want to do, and somehow I have changed both of those, and I have not only done it, but I actually wanted to do it while I was doing it most of the time. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you seven things I learned during the 75 hard challenge about myself that might help you if you are thinking about going down the path yourself. Really briefly, if you don't know what the challenge is, there are simple rules that are difficult to follow. So number one, drink a gallon of water a day, then read 10 pages of a nonfiction book. You have to do two 45 minute workouts a day. One has to be outside, take a progress picture every day, no alcohol, and then follow a diet. That diet can be of your choosing, but it has to be a reasonable diet that is designed for health and well-being. And then the kicker, if you miss any of those on any of the 75 days, you reset back to day number one. The first and most important thing, I think, when I got to the end of the 75 Hard Challenge, which was literally yesterday, was knowing if internally I felt like I succeeded or I failed. Now, there's obviously the very strict rules of the challenge, and then there's your own personal takeaways. And for me, this is gonna be different for you, I wanted to build discipline, I wanted to build mental toughness, because over the course of the last three or four years in my life, life has gotten really crazy. I have a business called Epic Gardening. You might know about it. We're quite a large YouTube channel, social media platform. We sell products all around the country, and that just absolutely exploded during the pandemic. And it's very easy as a founder or a creator or an entrepreneur to say, fitness can take a back seat. My diet can take a back seat. There's more important things to worry about right now, especially when you're running through two years of the pandemic. So for me, I was just feeling super, super unhealthy mentally, and physically, and I had actually bloated up to my highest weight of my life, almost touching 260 pounds. I was about 253, 254 when I started the challenge, and I wanted mental toughness and the secondary goal of some level of weight loss, just so I could prove to myself that I could put myself back on the path of health. And by the end of the challenge, I'm down 20 pounds, which Fortunately or unfortunately for me, I have a near perfect record of how I look at any point in time because of the life that I live. I make videos. So there's like a two year period where I can just see my face getting larger. And then over the last three months, I can see my face getting smaller. So I almost have too good a memory of this, but I needed to know that I could do that. So if you're thinking about the challenge, think about what the win is. Are you someone who chronically underhydrates? Do you want to build like a better mental resilience? Do you want to better yourself through knowledge? Like reading 10 pages a day, most people don't do that, right? Most people don't even read one or two books in a year. That alone could be the win for you, but know what you're going in with because it's tempting if you fail out or you start to falter a little bit to say like, ah, screw it, this whole thing is ruined, but you've actually gained quite a bit. Second thing is that multitasking actually isn't bad. Sometimes it's necessary, but the way that you do it is super important. So take the challenge. You know, you're walking 45 minutes a day. That was my morning workout. I would always do a 45 minute walk. And oftentimes I just head down to the local gym. There's a walking track on the second floor and I just walk in circles. And sometimes I would do that in almost a meditative way. And I just kind of be zoned into the present moment, just walking along kind of like an automaton, but in a way very freeing, very calming. And then as you get to day 30, 40, 50, I needed to start combining some of my activities so I had a chance to even get the challenge done. So I would be walking, I'd try to have really nice posture, I would pick my phone up and I'd be walking along like this doing my reading so I'd get my 10 pages in or maybe I'd even do my emails. And so sometimes you have to multitask, but one of the two tasks has to be one that you can do on autopilot. So that's where I think multitasking actually gets a bad rap. There are certain things where it is completely fine to do it in, but then the highest value stuff you end up doing in your life tends to be periods of time where you're mono-focused on a particular thing. This third thing I realize is probably the one that will help my life the most going forward, and it is actually understanding your relationship to food at a deep body level. And so I've always loved sweets, I've loved burritos. I grew up here in Southern California, so like a California burrito, some pizza, that kind of stuff was always fine. And back in college, I remember I used to slam like the $5 for two medium pizzas at Domino's, I'd eat the whole thing. I'm six foot three, it didn't seem to impact me much. That has become less true as I have entered my mid thirties. And what I realized is I was starting to use food as a blunting function on emotions I didn't want to feel. And I maybe even understood that on some conscious level, but not very well until I removed 
some of those stimuli from my life. So my diet that I chose was no alcohol, no sugar, and whole foods only. Whole foods only means literally no desserts whatsoever for the most part, unless it's fruit. And then I also couldn't have processed grains, which means all sandwiches, burritos, pizzas, that type of stuff was all gone. So I had no out for my brain and body to go to when I just didn't wanna feel certain emotions. Maybe I was feeling down, depressed, or sad, or anxious, or embarrassed, or ashamed. Any of these wide range of emotions that a lot of people, maybe especially men, don't really want to admit that they are feeling, I would go and grab a burrito or grab a pint of Ben and & Jerry's and I would eat that and what that would do is that would that would basically overtake my brain with the direct sensory inputs of the flavors, right? And so then I would be masking the negative emotions. They wouldn't go away, they would be effectively just shoved to a lower level of consciousness and I would be supplanting them with that, that bad food. What that would do is it would stave it off for maybe the night, but then that same feeling would come back. And so what's happened over the course of the challenge is I've become much more aware, not only of the feelings themselves and experiencing those feelings, shocking revelation, I know, but for someone with my background, it's, it's not necessarily so easy to feel those feelings sometimes. And then I also had no way to blunt them. So I had to go through those feelings, which meant that I actually had more high highs and more low lows, but they, worked their way through me and I no longer saw and see food as a way to stop them from happening because what I learned is those feelings are still going to be there whether you are slamming down your fifth pint of Ben and Jerry's for the month or you're not. Realization number four is consistency over intensity which is a pretty obvious one. I think a lot of people get this whether it's in sport or business or general life but getting to tomorrow on a challenge like this actually proved to be one of the biggest motivators for me. If I was sitting on day 11, like, oh my God, I have 60 days left. This is gonna be crazy. I don't know if I can make it, but I can certainly make it to tomorrow. So I would say, well, I've done one workout. I've had this much water. I've been eating well. I just need to do my reading and then maybe do another workout and I'll be good. I'll be at tomorrow and then I can just worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. So that's the case with almost everything in life. Consistency of habits and actions that you know have some positive impact over time almost always beats the level of intensity that you attack each day with. I think intensity really comes after demonstrating consistency over a long period of time. For example, take the business that I run, Epic Gardening. That is something where in the beginning it really started as a little blog, just a little blog I would write my articles on and if I could get two articles out in a day, that was a good day, I'd hang it up and I'd go back. These days we're putting out 120 articles a month videos over four YouTube channels, a daily podcast show. It's intense, the output is very high, but it only got there because every day I would show up and do the smaller things that would let me compound into that growth. And with fitness, something that I have historically neglected for at least three or four years, I have to admit to myself, hey look, just get the basics right dude and you'll be fine. You can pick up the intensity later when you can handle it both mentally and physically. Fifth one was a really practical tip for eating that allowed me to lose the 20 pounds that I lost. I went from 253 to 233 pounds roughly over 75 days without tracking my macros and without tracking my calories, which has never happened to me before. The most fit I was in my life was probably in 2015. I almost had a six pack, I was close and I was tracking my macros like crazy and I was like documenting every workout. This time I lost 20 without doing any of that and it's because of the approach to eating that I took. So here it is, it's very simple. Every meal should be protein forward. You should be thinking about how to get protein into that meal as much as humanly possible. And then for your carb or your fat, you should just have primarily one or the other. So, you know, chicken, rice, and beans would be a really good meal, AKA Chipotle, which is where I went for a lot of the challenge for lunches. Or you could do something like steak, eggs, avocado, and some leafy vegetables. That would be something more like a protein and fat combination. I didn't really have good results from having a balanced set of protein, carbs, and fats in one meal. Now, I think protein's important here because, you know, they say fat leads to the most satiety. I have found that protein tends to if you give it time. So if I have a protein forward breakfast, let's say maybe like a chia pudding with some eggs or something like that, 
if I waited long enough, I would feel much more full and I also wouldn't stuff myself as much as if I had a bunch of carbs on the plate. So to me, that really, really worked because I simply never felt hungry. So after the first three, four days of cravings for the pizza and the burritos and the ice cream, after that faded away, I didn't feel the need to go grab something off the shelf that was unhealthy because I simply wasn't hungry. Sixth thing I learned is a little bit out there it's a little bit philosophical but i think for me it's been really important it's that if you are feeling ashamed or embarrassed about a certain thing in your life let's say myself about how i was treating my body how my body looked my overall health if i was living up to other people's standards of me all that sort of stuff if, if i'm feeling ashamed of that it's very easy to get into like a shame spiral where because you feel ashamed you do more of the stuff that leads to those results that made you feel ashamed. So you basically kind of just go like this over and over and over again. Now, getting out of that with the 75 hard challenge, every morning I'm going on a walk, oftentimes in the sun, that's gonna lift your mood no matter what type of emotion that you're having. And you're gonna to prove to yourself that you are worth the actions that you are taking basically. So if I go out, take a morning walk, I'm hydrating well, I constantly, make good choices on the food that I'm eating, I'm gonna go, this guy must actually really enjoy being himself, right? Otherwise, why would he be doing all this stuff? I'm taking care of myself, so I must care for myself. So my shame can start to go away or my embarrassment can start to go away. Really interesting, you would think you could solve it in the mind. You would think you'd say, well, logically, I shouldn't be ashamed of that because you know, I could have forgiveness for myself for letting my health go or for doing this action or that action. You can't solve these things in the mind. You solve it via action and then the body and the mind respond to that action by changing the way that they see you, basically. So it's a little bit philosophical, a little bit weird, but I found that very helpful. Proving to yourself that you are something to care for is underrated. Seventh one is the power of a support system. A lot of the times people say, don't tell your goals to people because it makes you feel like you already accomplished them and then you don't actually do the work to accomplish them in a weird twist of fate. I think it's down to the individual. If that's how you work, then that's how you work. For me, I'm not really that way. I kind of like putting a line in the sand and saying, I said I'm gonna do this. So if I don't do this, I'm lying to myself and I'm lying to all the people that I just said I'm gonna do it to. Right, so my team at Epic Gardening, I said, you know what? No more sweets at the house when we're doing filming. No more dirty lunches with the crew. I can't be doing that right now. And they were down with it. They actually joined along for some of it. My girlfriend joined with me. She did 75 hard challenge as well. She modified it to suit her own preferences, but we both were kind of able to bounce off one another. Hey, you know, we can't be having that food right now. Don't even bring it up. Or how do we plan a vacation so that we can actually get our workouts in still and we feel like we're still making forward progress? I told my family, they were really interested in it. So it kind of felt like I had this crew of people that were silently or loudly rooting for me, which on days where I really didn't want to do the challenge actually helped me a lot. And I'm more of a lone wolf, do it myself kind of guy, more of a, like an extroverted introvert personality. So it was surprising to me how good it felt to have people in your corner rooting for you. But it really did. So I would say, tell people. Tell people you're gonna do it, get people to join in. It is a lot easier with a crew. 75 hard challenge, really fun, stressful at times, got a lot out of it at the end. Hopefully this helped you if you're thinking about doing it yourself. In a future video, I'm gonna share how my blood work changed from before and after. See if anything positive happened there. But subscribe if you want more of this. It's not gonna be just health. It's gonna be business, it's gonna be lifestyle, fitness, philosophy, all sorts of different things that interest me that are not gardening, if you were a fan of Epic Gardening. So shoot me a subscribe. Let me know what you wanna see down in the comments. Peace out.